Hello Youtubers, uh, in my previous video I have explained pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex, function of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex, arrangement of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and coenzyme requirements for pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and also I have explained about uh, each subunit, function of each subunit that is E1, E2, E3 and what if there is a deficiency of coenzymes, what happens in E1, E2, E3 subunits, arsenate poisoning and also I have explained a mutation in any of these subunits. So all the applied aspects and the high yield points about pyruvate dehydrogenase complex I have already explained and the link for that video is appearing on the right corner, right top corner right now. Kindly watch that video for better understanding of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex function. In this video I will be explaining about regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. So I have written here the overall function of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and that is pyruvate dehydrogenase converts pyruvate into acetyl-CoA molecule. So as we all know that uh, pyruvate is a 3 carbon compound and that will be converted into 2 carbon acetyl-CoA molecule and during this time one of the carbon is released as carbon dioxide. So pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex, it is going to insert CoH that is reduced coenzyme A into the reaction and that's what is the CoA here coming from coenzyme A and NAD here it will be reduced into NADH plus H plus. So this is the overall reaction of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex coming with the regulation. Now the regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme it is done at both the enzyme level and it is done at covalent modification step and also hormonal regulation. Now one of the regulation that I will be explaining now it is related with the feedback regulation. So whenever there is sufficient accumulation of acetyl-CoA molecules because acetyl-CoA is a product of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. So as expected, so whenever there is accumulation of acetyl-CoA, so this acetyl-CoA will have a negative effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. That's a classic feedback negative inhibition or that's a negative regulator on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Whenever there is accumulation of NADH plus H plus, so NADH H plus will have a negative effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex. So product acetyl-CoA and the co-product NADH plus H plus will have a negative effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex thereby activity can decrease. Now whenever there is accumulation of pyruvate, so this pyruvate will have a positive effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex, positive allosteric modulator. Similar to that, so if there is accumulation of CoH that is reduced coenzyme A, so that will have a positive effect on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex acting as a positive allosteric modulators. Now coming with the other two enzyme subunits which are attached with pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex and how they participate in regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. Now there are two subunits which will be attached with pyruvate dehydrogenase complex and that is referred as PDC kinase. So one of the subunit is PDC kinase here and other subunit is PDC phosphatase. As you can understand from the terminology, so PDC kinase it's going to add phosphate to this PDC, PDC active in dephosphorylated condition. So now this PDC, if the phosphate is added to this PDC active dephosphorylated PDC, so PDC will get into 
phosphorylated condition. So the dephosphorylated PDC is active form. So PDC kinase is going to add phosphate to PDC thereby phosphorylated PDC is in active form of an enzyme. So any factor that leads to activation of PDC kinase here. So anything that activates PDC kinase. So what it does, it is going to add phosphate to PDC that is active form of PDC and that will take it to inactive form of PDC. So let's see what all the factors that will activate PDC kinase. So the factor that can activate PDC kinase are acetyl-CoA itself. So acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA which is an end product of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex will keep this PDC active. By keeping PDC active, sorry PDC kinase, I'm sorry, acetyl-CoA which is an end product of PDC is going to keep PDC kinase active. So when the PDC kinase is active, what it does is going to take phosphate from ATP and keep it on to PDC and release ADP. One of the phosphate is added on to PDC here and phosphorylation has been done. Because of this, so PDC active form is taken into PDC inactive form. So acetyl-CoA, it keeps PDC inactive by keeping PDC kinase active. Now another thing that can keep PDC kinase active is whenever there is excess levels of NADH plus H plus that is accumulation of NADH plus H plus this is another co-product of PDC so it's going to keep PDC kinase active thereby it is going to phosphorylate PDC and keep it inactive. Now there are some factors which will inhibit or which will have a negative effect on PDC kinase. Any factor that keeps PDC kinase inactive, so they try to maintain this PDC active form because they are try trying to keep this PDC kinase inactive, thereby PDC kinase is no longer adding phosphate to PDC and that's why those factors will try to keep PDC in dephosphorylated condition. Now let's see what all the things that will keep PDC kinase inactive and that is pyruvate itself. Whenever there is accumulation of pyruvate, so pyruvate will have a positive effect on PDC kinase. I'm sorry. So they will have a negative effect on PDC kinase thereby PDC kinase activity will be decreased. In the same sense ADP, ADP levels, whenever there is excess levels of ADPs, so ADPs will also have a negative effect on PDC kinase thereby activity of PDC kinase is decreased thereby they help in maintaining PDC in dephosphorylated condition and that's an active form of PDC. So that makes sense here because when we have shortage of ADP we want to make some ATPs by converting pyruvate into acetyl-CoA and acetyl coa further down it will go into TCA cycle thereby they it will produce NADH plus H plus FADH2 they can be taken to electron transport chain to make ATPs that is why it makes sense for ADP to keep PDC kinase inactive thereby PDC is maintained in active state okay so this is how PDC kinase helps in regulating PDC by keeping it in phosphorylated condition or in dephosphorylated condition. Now let's see how PDC phosphatase is going to help in controlling PDC activity. Now the function of phosphatase as you all know so it is going to remove phosphate. Phosphatase is going to remove phosphate from PDC. Inorganic phosphate is removed thereby whenever inorganic phosphate this inorganic phosphate is removed from PDC so it is going to be activated because it gets into dephosphorylated condition so the job of PDC phosphatase is to remove phosphate from PDC inactive and bring it to PDC active so it means any factor that leads to or that keeps PDC phosphatase active that's going to keep PDC active or maintain it in the phosphorylated condition. So one such factor is calcium level. 
so whenever there is increase in calcium level in the mitochondria so calcium will have a positive effect on pdc phosphatase thereby this pdc phosphatase what it does is going to remove this phosphate here from pdc and release it and thereby bring this pdc from inactive into active state so it is trying to maintain pdc in dephosphorylated condition that is why so whenever a uh, muscle contraction occurs whenever we get into activity so where we need atp for actin myosin contraction so whenever there is increase in the calcium during muscle contraction that calcium not only which is participating in the muscle contraction it is also it is keeping pdc phosphatase active thereby pdc inactive form is taken into pdc active form thereby more and more pyruvate is going into acetyl coa formation and acetyl coa gets into tca cycle and we get energy out of it so that makes sense here because more calcium means we need more energy for actin myosin contraction if you have less uh, more adp here it means that the shortage of atp is in the cell it means pdc should be maintained active and that is done by keeping pdc kinase inactive okay these are all the allosteric modulations on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex now let's see how the hormonal regulation occurs on pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so there are two hormones that you need to remember one is the glucagon so glucagon so whenever there is a in fasting condition so during fasting condition we there will be increase in glucagon levels in the blood and glucagon is going to bind to glucagon receptor all that signaling will go on and will activate protein kinase a so protein kinase a what it does it's going to go and add phosphate to pdc thereby pdc is kept in active and it means pyruvate is not going into acetyl coa so pyruvate can be diverted back into glucose formation in gluconeogenesis that's what happens under fasting condition overall activity of pyruvate dehydrogenase complex decreases under fasting condition whenever we get into fed condition well fed condition so we will have more insulin in the there will be more insulin in the blood so what this insulin does insulin has got multiple effects on our metabolism but one of the effect of insulin is insulin will go and activate protein phosphatase enzyme protein phosphatase insulin activates protein phosphatase enzyme so this is a general enzyme so as the name says protein phosphatase so what it does it's going to go and remove phosphate from the protein here that's enzyme and release that phosphate it means enzyme is taken from phosphorylated state into dephosphorylated state that's the role of protein phosphatase mediated by insulin thereby insulin is trying to keep pdc active thereby more and more pyruvate is oxidized into acetyl coa molecule so this is how hormonal regulation occurs so during fasting condition glucagon is going to regulate enzymes through protein kinase a and in well fed condition insulin is going to regulate our metabolic enzymes through protein phosphatase that is why most of the time in my class i say to my students that the right hand man for glucagon is protein kinase a and the right hand man for insulin is protein phosphatase so consider glucagon as a boss and the man that work for this boss in the field is protein kinase a for glucagon i'm for a boss insulin here so insulin boss is protein is right hand man is protein phosphatase this protein phosphatase is the one which work in the field for it his boss that is insulin so this is how re- hormonal regulation will go on over pyruvate dehydrogenase complex that's about the regulation of pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme complex i hope you understood the all the regulator mechanisms for this particular enzyme thanks for watching see you in my next video